Get down there with me.
problem with leaving the uh, potatoes in the ground this long. It's a chance for disease for one thing, but like that got hollowed out, but I think even that's actually mouse damage. Show you a couple. quarter of the potato crop I would say in this section of the garden was eaten by mice which a couple of reasons one is that I left them in the ground like I said it's August now or it's mid-October and I should have harvested them in August so the plants died back and the uh, mice moved in and started eating them they left the really big ones or they ate the smaller ones so they didn't get big but the other thing is this straw method when you put the potatoes on the ground and put the straw over top, it just leaves a, gives a place for critters to move around underneath that straw, which is right where the potatoes are. So it's fine. This is the first time I've had this problem, but it's the first time I've left them in the ground till this point. So there's less other food. Well, there's still lots of food. Lots of seeds and berries and stuff. But anyway, the mice are finding this easy pickings. So they're just traveling and creating homes under the straw and then eating away at them. Like I said, probably a quarter, which is in this section, gonna be 50 to 50 to 75 pounds, let's say. They'll still get maybe two to 300 pounds. Anyway, good thing I have redundancy, the two garden sections where I got uh, pest pressure, different types of pests here I've still got gates that are open and fences that are not uh, deer proof so they can walk right through. So I've got the odd moose that comes in here but they don't typically like any of these crops so they haven't done any damage but uh, the deer certainly would if they could get in or if they bothered to come in. I think Callie's kept them away. But like I said redundancy and a redundancy in, in the food type so I've got lots of wild game meat for most of our calories actually. And then two gardens full of potatoes. So I'll have four or five hundred pounds probably still that we'll harvest. And then sweet potatoes, sunchokes, tomatoes, rutabaga, peas, and then everything with carrots and everything from the other garden. Anyway, finish this up. Forget it in the cellar. Forget it dried. I have to put this stuff on the upper floor of the cabin for a week or so and uh, let it cure get a good crust on it especially the squash and sweet potatoes and that'll make them store a lot longer big hole from one plant but that's the beds that were in the greenhouse that's what I'm standing in with the richest deepest soil I'm not surprised it's gonna take a few years for the soil outside the beds to catch up in quality these red wigglers that I put in here the worms are here Eating the compost on top for the little worms. All kinds of them. Remember, I put them in these beds. Yeah, it's tons. To improve the soil the aeration and to provide worm castings. And obviously, it's doing well, working well. The um, straw on top here, which came from my sister's place, which was organic, her whole property. It um, actually, see, there's the seed potato. That's the potato that I put in the ground to grow the potatoes, and the worms are eating it like crazy. Which is exactly what I have them in here for. Compost all, all this. 
rich organic material. So these beds are just going to keep improving. Even though I'm taking a lot of nutrients out of the bed, I'll just keep adding it in with more compost and more organic materials for the worms to compost.
All right, so this section's pretty much done. A little bit of trim to do there, and then I have to put a door on. But the shelves themselves are complete enough. These pails are not staying in here, but it's a good place to put them while I'm moving. Well, while I'm working on this section, that section, and the freezer section. Um, they're five gallon pails full of long term food storage. So that's rice that was uh, packaged with, um, what do you call it? Uh, this is, that one's rice, 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 popcorn, rice, popcorn, freeze dried meals. Uh, what else? Not sure what else. And I've got some totes full of. Oh, there's all kinds of five gallon pails and then some big totes full of dehydrated meals or freeze dried meals in mylar packaging 25 year stuff that we made with a freeze dryer so that is all going on different shelves this section here is either going to be a nice house or a, a, probably a cheese cave split it in two i'll show you that next week and be working down here probably for another week uh, so I'll finish that and put some shelves in. So probably a meat cave and a, and a, or a cheese cave and a meat um, curing spot. The sections in there are going to hold all these pails, which will pretty much fill that 10 foot wall on that section. So this is, well, that thing in there also might be for fruit. So keeping apples or onions separate, for example. Uh, this looks like it's probably going to hold all of the potatoes, squash, so I've got some more squash up here, and I could arrange those a little bit better. This is 10 feet long, the shelves are 22 or 24 inches deep, so 2 feet, and then I've got a, just over 2 foot walkway. So, like I said, all of the vegetables go in this section, so squash and things like that up higher where it's a little bit warmer, I would say. And then potatoes, sweet potatoes, onions, unless, I, like I said, I put them in that section. Carrots are probably, one of the main reasons I kept this as a, as a dirt floor, two reasons. One is that it's got more moisture, so I can keep the humidity levels up in this section. And I can do that by checking the humidity levels. And if they're low, just put water down on this floor, actually. So into the sand instead of on the wood itself. So if it's in the sand, then it can kind of perspire or respire. So that'll keep it higher humidity in here. And I have the option to do that in that section as well. Um, the other thing is I kept more sand in here. Got kind of lazy digging it out <laughs> partially, but then I thought, well, I'll just use the sand that's extra to store um, carrots and so I'll either bury them in the floor in that section or more likely what I'll do is get more of these food grade five gallon pails. So I'll put the carrots um, alternating layers with sand and, and carrots to keep them from touching each other. So that will be probably stored either in there or I don't, well maybe there's enough room to put them on these shelves, I'm not sure. But either way, all the vegetables are going into this cellar. And then different things in that section. Got pails and totes in that section. Got my thousand liter water tank that's going on that wall underneath the kitchen sink. And the drains are hooked up already going out that way as well. And then the electrical panel. And then the section where the stairs is. And again, I'll show that to you next week when I'm working on that section. Uh, the freezer's in there. Uh, I've been eating my way through the freezer and I'm down to just the mousse and that's just in quarters so I'll cut that up next week and while I'm doing that while I have it out I'll quickly put the boards up they're already cut put the boards up on that back wall so that I can uh, move the freezer back in place permanently so that section that's going to have I might have a few other things stored in, in there as well. Maybe even some tools in that section. So it's, I'm going to fill the space up, but it's a lot of space. And it's kind of a bonus. I didn't uh, have this in the old cabin. And it's a more stable temperature spot. So it's always 
basically five six probably ten degrees Celsius right now because the door is not on yet and it's I've got the cabin pretty warm because I was curing these squashes upstairs so I had it a little bit hotter during the day than I normally would but anyway this is it the doors next week well ventilation so let me put that fan in so that fan sends the air out that way so it's sucking air from in here I put this vent in so that air could come get some circulation through here so out there I might put another vent or probably almost definitely we'll put another vent in the door that goes into that section and then another vent in the door down low for cold air so that hopefully that fan is able to pull the air through from there from that section through the vent through these two vents and out and if not that will install a second fan or yeah install a second fan I already have little um, direct current fans like computer fans and they're you know only about that big but I can kind of install them um, just hooking into that panel distribution panel I could put them in all these sections just to get airflow so that the uh, I don't get mold and I don't get I just stale air and it kind of keeps the temperature even throughout as well anyway that's it so like I said next week I'll be continuing it's it's moose season so I'll be doing some moose hunting and maybe some bow hunting for deer it depends whether I'm seeing anything local anyway I'll concentrate on moose hunting for another five days and work during the day on trying to get these uh get this cellar done so like I guess it'll if I finish it all I'll do a complete tour of the entire cellar maybe even a complete tour of the cabin oh if the weather's decent next week I am going to work outside to get try to get more of that outdoor kitchen done maybe even some of the stonework anyway that's it <laughs> thanks for watching I appreciate it and I look forward to seeing you back here at the cabin next time Take care.